The myth of the self-made billionaire. You know, there's been a lot of discussion uh, as of recent about certain people that have become billionaires. There's been a lot of praise for people like Taylor Swift, Beyonce, and Jay-Z, Rihanna, all these people that are now billionaires. And if you hear about the way that mainstream media discusses it, they make this sound like it's a good thing. It is not a good thing. And I'm going to explain to you why. And we are going to debunk this idea of a self-made billionaire. There's no such thing. It's not not real. And we're going to start moving away from that phrase. Billionaires are problematic. One does not become a billionaire without exploiting the workers. That's how you get there. So when someone becomes a billionaire and you see mainstream media applaud them, that should be a thumbs down from you. We're going to do it the thumbs down because that's not something that you should applaud. They are applauding these people exploiting the workers. Let's get started with this clip here from Second Thought. He did such a phenomenal job with this. The myth of the self-made billionaire. We have a couple other things I want to dive into as well. The heart of every favorable depiction of a billionaire is this idea that they have earned their success and their wealth. The most compelling stories are those of billionaires who, through sheer hard work and grit, so we're told, have conquered the American dream and made a better life for themselves, those around them, and our society as a whole. But there are a number of reasons this is simply incorrect. We'll, we'll pause there for a second. So this idea that these people have become billionaires because they worked so much harder than the rest of you. And I'm pretty sure there are a lot of you that work really hard. I know people that have multiple jobs. I've had multiple jobs, right? So because you're not a million, a billionaire or a millionaire, actually, that doesn't mean that you're not working hard. We'll get to exactly how this idea is wrong in a second. But first, we should talk about why the myth of self-made billionaires is such a problem. For starters, vanishingly few people ever become billionaires. In the US, it's around 600 people, or 0.0002% of This number right here, we all need to pay attention to. 600 people in the United States. So this goes back to the Occupy Wall Street movement. Remember the 99%? There's way more of us than there are of them. But yet they have immense power because they are at the tippity-tippity top the population. Perversely, however, the myth of the self-made billionaire tries to trick you into believing that anybody, yes, even you, dear viewer, could one day be just like them. After all, if they can do it, so can you. You already know how they attempt to sell this falsehood. It's always so incredibly simple. They tell you they started from nothing, that they were once just like you. They too had a 9-to-5 job that they hated. They too had trouble paying their bills. But instead of complaining, they just worked harder. And eventually, after 100-hour work weeks, they were able to lift themselves up by their bootstraps and just look at them now. Here's where the problems start. If they can successfully convince you that one, they have earned their wealth, and two, that you can do it too, they can use those two assumptions to convince you of some far more nefarious things. For starters, they can convince you to act against your own self-interest and the interest of the vast majority of Americans. The most obvious example of this is making it seem like it would be better for everyone if billionaires paid less in taxes. If we just got the government out of the way of these people who have proven to us that they are visionaries, that they alone know how to manage money. To be clear, the ultra-rich already have a good way of avoiding taxes. You can see exactly how they do it in our video, How Billionaires Pay Less in Taxes Than You. But of course that doesn't matter since they'll always try to lower that number further and further. The more pause right there for a second for many of us that complain about the number or the amount of taxes that we have to pay. Just remember a lot of times these billionaires, they're able to pay almost no taxes. They have a lot of different loopholes. They have offshore accounts, <laughs> something that we wouldn't have. Right? So these people are the tippity tippity top and we are the bottom. You may think you're not the bottom, but when you compare us to the billionaires, we are at the bottom. So it's only fair that they should have to pay their fair share of taxes too, but they don't because the system is designed to benefit the ultra wealthy and to punish those of us that are not. That's on purpose. They do, the less money goes towards things that actually affect your day-to-day -day life. Roads, public services, healthcare, education. The more they keep of the wealth they have no intention of spending in the first place, the worse off we all are. They'll convince you that that might be you someday. That when you're in their shoes, you'll want the same thing. 
After all, what's the government ever done for you? We'll get to just how much it's done for them. But first, let's get back to the self-made story. In some cases, that story is simply a blatant lie. Take Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos. The last decade's favorite billionaire duo loves to weave a compelling story of their 100% American-made success. Jeff Bezos likes to tell this story of a young guy who built a strong work ethic at his McDonald's job. He loves to emphasize how it was his hard work that eventually landed him a spot at Princeton, then on Wall Street, and finally pushed him to one day risk it all on the crazy idea of selling books on the internet. His story reaches a dramatic pause when he starts Amazon out of a garage with nothing but a dream, and it resumes satisfyingly when his company becomes the internet giant it is today. Elon Musk tells a very similar story, that of an industrious kid, bullied for being too nerdy and into science fiction, who climbed out of adversity and overcame the all-too-common American hurdles of student loan debt and people not believing in him with the sheer ingenuity of his entrepreneurship. These stories are, of course, embellished, and while individual elements of them may not be false, the overall image they're trying to sell you is a lie. Be it is a lie, and let's dive into this a little bit, okay? So one thing that I want to point out, this idea that they came from nothing, they didn't come from nothing. It takes money to make money. Always remember that. You can't make money without someone giving you a little bit of money, a little bit of capital, startup capital to start a business. So they had access to money prior and they also had access to certain networks. They just told you how Jeff Bezos was at Princeton. Obviously at these schools like Princeton and Harvard and Stanford, there is a network that is created for people that attend those schools. I see that often for those of us who live in the Boston area, we can see it. Same thing for institutions like MIT, right? So they didn't start with nothing. We gotta start pushing back on that rhetoric. Because it wasn't the novelty of Amazon alone that catapulted it to the center of the internet, so much as the absurd head start that an initial $300,000 investment that Jeff's parents gave him. And although Musk likes to play up his version of the everyman story too, his family is most infamously known for his father's ownership of a lucrative emerald mine and role as a property developer in apartheid South Africa. So there you go. Both of them, both of these guys came from families that had money. If your parents had money to invest in you, I'm sure they would invest in you as well. So we have to stop saying that Elon Musk is self-made. Stop saying that Jeff Bezos is self-made. I've seen a number of magazine articles that have said that Kylie Jenner is self-made. These people are not self-made. Kylie Jenner comes from a family that was already wealthy, that was already very well connected. You have to remember where the Kardashians actually come from, right? So Kylie Jenner is, well, now Caitlyn Jenner, but at the time was Bruce Jenner. That was Bruce Jenner's daughter. Bruce Jenner was already famous, well-connected, had a lot of money. Then you marry a Kardashian. He married uh, Kim Kardashian's mother. And then you got to remember where did they get their wealth from? Kim Kardashian's father actually, remember, he was one of the lawyers that was a part of the O.J. Simpson case. So these people grew up with a silver spoon. They grew up in wealthy families. So you don't come from nothing. These people didn't start from nothing. It wasn't just hard work. Billionaires never get there alone. They get there in any combination of three ways. One, family wealth and privilege. Two, labor exploitation. And three, government help. Let's start with number one. Family wealth and privilege explains the success of a lot of the billionaires that sit at the top of our social hierarchy. We've already seen how much of a role family wealth played in the success of even the quote, self-made celebrity billionaires like Musk and Bezos. So it should come as no surprise that the great majority of billionaires have similarly favorable advantages. The racial and gender makeup of the billionaire class is not an accident. It is no surprise then that the people who face the fewest societal hurdles, white men, overwhelmingly dominate the Forbes rankings while women and people from racial minority groups only make up a fraction. But privilege doesn't explain every single billionaire's climb to the top. Exploitation, however, does. What do we mean when we say exploitation? Let's pause. For those just joining, three ways that people become billionaires. Number one, family wealth. Number two, exploitation, which we're diving into now. And then number three is, um, oh, did I forget that one already? 
What did I say? I forgot the third one. Family worth, wealth, exploitation. Oh, and help from the government. So you see, we'll get into that too. You'll see how the government will help them, but they won't help you. Those familiar with Marxist literature will already know that exploitation is the expropriation of surplus value from labor by capital. Okay, but what does that mean? It's actually very simple. According to Marx, society is divided into two classes. The owner class, the bourgeoisie, and the working class, the proletariat. This is where the Marxist theory comes in. And you may not consider yourself to be a Marxist, but I do think some of the theory is important when we're talking about class in this country. Most of us are a part of the proletariat. Most of us are working class. Most of us are not a part of the owner class. And this is important. I think this is the theme for tonight's show when we think about all the stories that we're going to cover. Even when we touch on the Hillary Clinton story, I'm going to explain to you how a lot of us are not a part of that class. We're not a part of the same class as Hillary Clinton. A lot of us aren't a part of the same class as, as someone like Joe Biden. And I think this is where the disconnect begins. Most of us are a part of the working class and we are the ones that are constantly exploited. I promise I'll make this quick. The owner class, people who own businesses, factories, farms, and so on, offer a deal to the working class, work or starve. As you already know, just about every single one of us takes that deal. So, what do the owner class say? They say that for X amount of hours worked, workers will be paid Y amount of money. In order for that deal to be profitable for the owner class, they need to pay workers less money than the value they actually produce. And this is how they exploit the workers. This is part of the reason why they haven't increased the federal minimum wage. This is how they become billionaires because they pay the working class less than what they're actually, the time that you put in and what you produce, you're not actually being paid what you should be paid. If you were being paid what you should be paid for your labor, we would not have a billionaire class. This is what they want to prevent. Why do you guys think they're not increasing the federal minimum wage? Why do you think you got these congressmen, Democrats and Republicans that voted against the $15 minimum wage? That is the donor class telling them to do so. They're the ones calling the shots. So think about that for a second. None of you that are part of the working class is getting paid what you should get paid for your labor. That's how they stay in place. That difference is what Marx calls surplus value. The money that you make for the company will always be more than the money the business puts back into your hands in the form of a paycheck. Otherwise, it has no money to give the people who own the company, the stakeholders, who may never have even stepped foot on the premises. If you want an idea of just how much value business owners steal from their workers, just look at this Ohio pizza shop, where for one day the owner decided not to siphon off that surplus value and instead put it back into the hands of the workers. The result? Employees made $78 an hour. That's the Marxist definition of exploitation, and every single capitalist business in the world relies on it, whether they want to or not. The most egregious examples, of course, are those we see with billionaires companies, in which figureheads who no longer work on or only ever held stock in the company walk away with hundreds of millions of dollars a year. But even with a more relaxed definition of exploitation, we see this kind of behavior playing a massive role in billionaires' wealth. One thing I want to add here, I want everybody to think back to the pandemic. Remember CEOs, they actually doubled their wealth during the pandemic, where a lot of people lost their jobs, lost their, a lot of small businesses went under. Yes, the government did send money, those PPE loans or whatever to the small businesses, but they actually sent those to governors of the states and some of the governors didn't even distribute the money properly. So some of those small businesses just failed altogether because they didn't even get those loans in time. So we have to look at who's really controlling things here. And I know a lot of times people will push back on me for criticizing capitalism, but the reason why billionaires are allowed to exist is because we operate in a capitalist system. If we didn't operate in a capitalist system, we would not have the billionaires. And 
when we talk about exploitation, I want you to understand the exploitation may not always happen in the United States with a billionaire's company. Take Rihanna, for example. Rihanna created Fenty. Her Fenty line is very successful, very popular. But it was revealed over a year ago that even Rihanna was exploiting workers overseas. So although this product here in the United States, you got to remember who is actually making it. A lot of products are not made in the United States. They're made in the global South. And those people are also exploited. So you may like Riri's music. And I'm not saying you can't dance to the Riri songs, but we should not applaud her for being a billionaire. And what really disgusts me is that mainstream media has actually gone in that direction. They're giving shout outs to people for becoming billionaires without explaining to the American people what that actually means. So just remember, the exploitation doesn't always happen here in the United States. Oftentimes it happens abroad. You may have recently heard of exploitation occurring in newly minted billionaire Rihanna's Fenty Beauty Factories or Beyonce's <laughs> Ivy Park sweatshops. It's immediately obvious to us how sweatshop labor is clearly exploitative when workers, often children, make mere cents for each grueling hour spent in unsafe conditions. Compare that to the billionaire status of those at the top, and it's impossible not to see something deeply wrong and exploitative in the working arrangements they have created. Pause here for a second and then we'll dive into this issue as well. Think about who's making some of these products. Most of us have a cell phone, right? Technology changes and sometimes we end up moving with the technology. We have no choice but to move with the technology. But why do we have cell phones? Why do we have smartphones? Because of the mines in the Congo. So you have the Congolese that actually are mining cobalt in those cobalt mines. That is why you're able to have a cell phone. That's why you have that rechargeable battery. So cobalt is very important. That's exploitation. You have children actually working in those mines in the Congo. It happens all across the world. Now, the simple response I think you'll get from people is that they'll tell you, well, just don't purchase those products. It's not as simple as you think. There may be products that you're purchasing that you actually need or you have no choice but to purchase them because that's the only game in town. I've watched multiple stores close, particularly retail stores in shopping malls and whole shopping malls close because Amazon has taken over. So if you live in one of these rural towns where there's no longer other businesses for you to work at, but there's an Amazon warehouse and the Amazon warehouse put them out of business, what are you supposed to do? There is no ethical consumption under capitalism. So as long as the capitalist system remains in place, you will always have these issues. Very important to note. While Rihanna and Beyonce might be the face of the club this week, they are no more or less culpable than their mega wealthy peers, those whose less glamorous companies managed to avoid the spotlight. Once again, how does this kind of behavior make a person self-made? That brings us to point number three, government help. Here, the conservative and libertarian views of the world's billionaires are the most evidently hypocritical. Elon Musk is probably one of the biggest offenders, so let's come back to him for a second. Musk often talks about the government in very disfavorable terms. He regularly decries government regulation, does everything he can to avoid taxation, and fiercely defends the belief that markets should be free. That Elon Musk also, remember he was against the Tesla employees starting a union. Don't forget that. That said, the billionaires' companies, SpaceX, Tesla, and SolarCity, would have no hope of existing without the government's absurd $4.9 billion in loans and tax breaks. We're using Musk as a flagrant example here. But the nature of our current economy is that throughout the entirety of the chain of production, government subsidies are granted from public money only for the profits to be privatized by people who hoard wealth at a level we haven't seen since the Gilded Age. Pharmaceutical research is another classic example of this phenomenon, yep. where large amounts of government funds produce the innovations needed for life-saving medication, only to eventually be appropriated by the private sector, where profits stay squarely within the hands of a few executives who jack up prices and strand countless Americans without access to the health care they need. Pause for a second. I want to highlight this point here made by Eric. 
use eBay and Best Buy instead of Amazon. I don't know about Best Buy, but the owner of eBay is also a billionaire. That's Pierre Audemeyer. He is actually one of the guys uh, that was a part of the intercept. Remember that big whole story that broke when people were like the intercept is funded by billionaires. So this is what I'm trying to tell you. They're everywhere. They got their hands in some of everything. This is not the vision free market proponents are selling us, where their ludicrous profits are justified by all the risks that innovation entails. In reality, they benefit from the largest public money safety nets in our society. Billionaires receive the government help most analogous to socialism of anyone, but fiercely get in the way of the rest of us enjoying the same privileges so that they can pocket more money than entire nations. And this is why you cannot, from now going forward, if you're criticizing people that are on welfare, people that need uh, food stamps or SNAP benefits, you're fighting against the worker. And that's what the billionaire class wants you to do. Second thought, he just showed you and explained to you how they get government assistance. These billionaires do. It's also a form of socialism. Our government is totally fine with socialist practices for the uber rich. They're just not fine for it for the working class. So we can never forget that. They are also getting government handouts. So how do we change our rhetoric around this? Instead of attacking your fellow worker, your neighbor and saying, I'm tired of all these people. This is the scapegoating, right? You got to blame somebody else instead of blaming the billionaires. I'm tired of all these people on welfare. I'm tired of my taxes going towards paying for these people getting government assistance. Billionaires get more government assistance than Americans that are working class. When we make those kind of statements, that's exactly what they want us to do. They want us to turn on the workers. No billionaire has ever gotten to their status by ethical means. And to revere them as icons of self-made success is to give them a pass for their selfish, parasitic behavior. We can dream of success without them. We can achieve greatness without them. We can let go of the myth of self-made billionaires. Imagine for a moment a world without billionaires. Imagine that world where you could actually get the full value of your work, like those pizza shop workers with their $78 an hour wage. How much less stressful would your life become? How much more pleasant and fair would it all be were it not for someone at the top hoarding far more than their share? That's right. And we need to think it and imagine a world like that. We need to envision a world like that. These things are possible. But yes, it is going to be a fight. You are fighting very powerful people, but there's so few of them and there are so many more of us. And that was the whole point behind Occupy Wall Street was to wake people up and make people realize, yo, we are the 99%. There's way more of us than them, way more. Our government is owned by them. <laughs> so you can't rely on your politicians to come in and do you any favors when they're owned by the billionaire class. We have to make this connection. It's very important for you to understand why things function the way that they do. But instead, this is what we'll often do. And I want you to hear what this woman says. This is from a video called How the Wealthy Gaslight America. I wanna make sure I'm at the right. Is this what I wanted here? I thought I was going to hear. Oh, yeah, we'll go to here first and then we'll come back to the other part. How the wealthy gaslight America. Well, I mean, maybe working class at that point, definitely not even lower middle class or middle class. Um, I couldn't afford a car, could not afford um, to do anything that was not, you know, like just above surviving and trying to have fun in your mid 20s. And then I moved to New York and that's when things sort of changed for me. Right now, I, just looking at what I made last year, gross, um, and what I was able to bring home uh, from the business that is me um, combined with my husband's income, we would probably be classified as upper middle class. And even now, that's her story, right? Now let's fast forward because I want you to hear what she says, how they bring in, whoops, how they make us doubt ourselves and question ourselves. 
I think it's right about here, I believe. This is like, this is my life. This is most of my life, you know, but also the people on the other end, the people who come from the more um, working class, impoverished background, the people who are going to be closer and have more experience with things like having an incarcerated parent, they don't want to hear how many of the rich, wealthy people I know are woefully unhappy, like crazy unhappy. And in a lot of cases, a little bit lazy and a lot of bit stupid. Like people don't want to hear that. They don't want to know that. They want to think, but I see this person with this and that, and they got this and that. And I don't know how to tell them. Yeah, because their uncle works in this industry, got them a job interning when they were 13, and they've never done anything else. They know all the people who are hiring for all the jobs and they're getting them because they, they, they're they there and they know how to do that job. Meanwhile, you're sitting at home thinking maybe you didn't spruce up your resume enough. You're thinking, oh, maybe I didn't have the best interview. You're thinking maybe I should have worn those black shoes instead of the brown ones. What we have to understand is that these people are already connected. They are basically given a network of connections. If you're coming from wealthy family, you're born with it. If you're going to these Ivy League schools, you actually get those connections at those Ivy League schools. And Americans should not have to attend an Ivy League university in order to have that same opportunity. But this is where we are. It's a special type of privilege. You're thinking, what did I do wrong? You're sitting at home wondering, why do I have to work two jobs? Instead of asking, why are so many of these billionaires existing at all? Why is the economy the way that it is? We have blamed the worker. Some of us have blamed ourselves. I've been there too, I've blamed myself. But you have to look at the system as a whole for what it really is. And what she just said is very true. We don't realize a lot of times those people, they already knew the person that owned the company, someone in the family owned the company, they already had those connections. So if you are exploiting the workers, if you're from a wealthy family, if you have those network connections, and if you are getting that assistance from the government, you are not self-made. You are a billionaire because you exploited those workers. They made you a billionaire. I feel like people really needed to hear that. And I feel like people also need to see, hear and see this. This was recent from The Guardian. All billionaires under 30 have inherited their wealth. You see this? This is what they don't want you to talk about. All billionaires under 30 have inherited their wealth. Research finds. Okay? We're going to stop it with the self-made. All of the world's billionaires younger than 30 inherited their wealth. The first wave of the great wealth transfer in which more than 1,000 wealthy people are expected to pass on more than $5.2 to their heirs over the next two decades. The great transfer of wealth. This is the reason why most of us can't get by with one income if you have kids. Some of us grew up that way. So how many of you grew up where one of your parents was able to stay at home at least for a short time? My mom stayed at home with me until I went to kindergarten. Then she went back to work. How many of you can do that now? Billionaires are continuing to increase. There are already more billionaires than ever before, 2,781. And the number is expected to soar in the coming years as an earl elderly, excuse me, generation of super rich people prepare to give their fortunes to their children. Research by Forbes magazine found there were 15 billionaires aged 30 or under, but that none had created their own wealth. 
instead benefiting from huge inheritances. So we got to stop saying this. And that goes for all of them. And it doesn't matter if you like these people as musicians. It doesn't matter if you like their work. You cannot applaud them for becoming a billionaire. That means they are exploiting the workers. Now, how do you fight back against that? One way that we can fight back against that and seriously cause some type of disruption or ripple effect is we need more worker cooperatives. We need more worker co-ops. Unionization, I think, is the first step. That's a good first step. But ultimately, the end game in reference to labor should be worker co-ops. If we don't own anything, then we don't own anything. You know what I'm saying? We have to disrupt that system. And the fact that billionaires are continuing to increase in the world, that just goes to show you where we're headed. Now, almost two years ago, we hosted a general strike summit over at RBN because of this reason. Because voting for politicians wasn't changing anything when they belong to the billionaire class. Supporting the Democratic Party, supporting the Republican Party doesn't change anything when they're owned by the billionaire class. The way to really fight back, ultimately, is going to be a general strike. You are going to have to disrupt the flow of production, goods, and services. That includes the truckers, that includes the employees that work at the ports, and that includes the railroad workers. And this is why Joe Biden wanted to prevent the railroad workers from going on strike. Because if you disrupt the goods and services, you disrupt supply, that really does some damage.